This thing is loud, stinky, and makes quite the mess. So I'm going to make an enclosure that can solve all those issues while making sure I can still access the machine. The enclosure will have a vent going outside the shop and some lights inside so I can see what's going on in there and so I can film some time lapses as well. One of the problems with enclosures is getting at the machine inside can be difficult. The official Snapmaker enclosure has done a good job of making the machine accessible by having both a front door and a large side door. This makes it pretty easy to get at the cables or the filament or to change out the bed. But I think it would be better to have the top open as well as the front doors. So that's what I'm going to do. If I can open the top, then I won't have to duck under it to reach anything inside. I'm going to use mostly construction lumber and what I have left over from the shop renovation. So this should be pretty affordable. I've made some detailed plans on how I built this. So if you're interested, you can check them out on our Etsy shop. I'll add a link in the description. Most of the lumber for this is going to be one by one. So I'm going to plane down some two by fours to one inch thick. Apparently these shavings are highly static charged, and I think that I filled the vacuum and the dust collector to capacity. Like all good buildings, I'll start at the bottom. I'm going to make a platform from some one by one boards, joined together with half lap joints. So now I'm going to put the crosscut sled to work, and cut out some lap joints on the ends of these boards. With all my joints cut, I can dry fit it all together and make sure it fits. It all seems to work well, so I'm going to glue it up with the help of some positioning squares and clamps. I also added a couple of staples to really hold it all together. There, now time to cut the panel to cover this all up. I'm using the scraps from the panels that are covering the walls of the shop. Some of this stuff is pretty warped. Put some glue and some staples, hold it down flat enough for my purpose. I am going to add a bit of a decorative edge around the base to hide the edge of that paneling. And I do have a little bit of oak left from the puzzle easel. So I'm going to cut it down the middle and run it through the planer until it's about a quarter inch thick. Now I can just cut these to width on the table saw and then cut them to length on the crosscut sled. Now I'll just add it to the base with some glue and some brad nails. Then just to be sure, I clamped it all together with my random assortment of clamps. The base can be set aside for now while I work on the side panels. The one by one boards need a channel cut in each of them, so I'll do that with the router. And this is the exact point where my router decided not to live on any longer. The router is dead. I guess it was pretty old, and it was inexpensive when I got it. I think I got at least 10 years out of it, but now it needs replacing. After a bit of research and price checking, I ended up with this Bosch 2.5 horsepower fixed based router. I did have a bit of a tough time getting it to mount on my current table, but I got it to work in the end. I think a future project will have to be a decent router table. Okay, with the router problem solved, let's get back to cutting those channels. The new router worked great, and all the channels are done, for now. The next step is to cut some stub tenons in the cross pieces. For that, it's back over the crosscut sled, and the stop block works great for this part. Now that these are all cut out, I'm going to paint them white. And now I need to cut a panel that will go in the middle. Then put it all together. This is basically just a large cupboard door. The other side panel, however, is going to be a little different. I want to be able to hang some things on this side, so the interior panel is going to be a bit thicker. And for this, I'm going to use some of the reclaimed wood from the barn. This lumber needs to be checked for nails first, so I use my trusty magnet on a wiggly stick. Once I'm sure there's no nails, then I can trim off the tongue and the groove, and then take it over to the planer. I'm just going to clean up the surface a little bit on this and then resaw it on the bandsaw. 
After I have these to rough size, they go back into the planer to bring them each to half an inch. These boards, unfortunately, can be filled with a lot of knots, and the planer made a mess of some of them. But I should still have enough wood for this side after I trim away all the knot holes. I'm going to have these boards overlapping, so I'm going to route out a quarter inch off each side. This will be the side that faces me while I work at my desk, so I thought I'd make it shine a little. For the outer part of this panel, it's a bit different than the other side, since it has to accommodate a half inch panel, rather than just a 3 16 inch panel. So back to the router, with a bigger bit this time. I also had to make a couple other notches on these boards over at the bandsaw, but apparently I don't know how to work a camera, so I have no footage for that. I also painted these posts like the other side, and now I can attach the sides to the base. I used some countersunk deck screws from underneath to hold the sides to the base. With the sides on, I added the back panel, which was pretty much the same as the first side panel, so I'll skip that. And you've already seen me make a few stub tenon joints, so no need to see that again. I did end up making some more of these for the two front doors. And I also cut some Lexan down to size. This seems to cut just fine on the table saw, but it does smell a bit. The door panels all seem to fit together well enough, so I'll give them a coat or two of that white paint. Then, later when they're dry, I can glue it all together. I'll try not to get too much glue on the Lexan. Before attaching the doors, I added a couple of French cleats to the side. This is where I'll be storing a lot of the tools and accessories that I need close at hand. Now it's time to put the doors on. This is getting pretty close to done. I do want to add some magnets to keep the doors closed tight and some door handles as well. As it sits now, this has a bit of a flaw. Without any cross support here, the walls will wobble at the top. But if I put a piece across here for support, then it'll get in the way when I want to reach into the enclosure. So my solution was to make that cross piece removable. I am going to 3D print something to mount the cross piece on that will allow it to be removed whenever I want to open this up all the way. Then I just attach the mounts to either side and cut a cross piece to length and now cut a channel into it to fit in the mounts. It's finally time to make the lid. I wanted to make this as light as possible so it's not a pain to lift. So for that I'm going to use the same reclaimed wood. I built an outer frame using half lap joints cut out on the table saw using the crosscut sled. This was a little tedious with a standard blade. It might have been better to use a dado stack but this was much faster to set up. Then I routed out a channel for the top panel to sit in. These panels can be pretty warped, so I added some glue all the way around. And then the only thing I had that was thin enough not to punch all the way through was some staples. I put in a whole bunch to help keep it all together. Once that was all dry, it's time to attach the lid. The lid will also get some magnets to help hold it closed. That's the basic enclosure done. But this one will have a couple of extra features to make it just that much better. I am going to exhaust this to the outside, so I bought a hole saw for this job, and I thought I better test it out on some scrap first. I 3D printed a mount for the dryer hose and attached it to the side of the enclosure. I also drilled a small hole for some cables to pass through. One of those cables will be for the LED strip. That should make it bright enough for filming in there. I was not looking forward to this part. I spent a lot of time building this shop, and now I'm going to drill a 4 inch hole straight through to the outside of the barn. But it has to be done if I want this to vent outside. And to help with that, I found a fan that attaches to the outside vent that will draw the air from the enclosure and help keep my shop from getting too smoky when using the laser etcher. And when the CNC is running, it'll pull most of the airborne dust out of the enclosure. The enclosure is now sitting in its new home and it sure does open wide. That'll make changing functions and cleaning it out a lot easier. This is really quite a large space. The Snapmaker can fit in here front to back or side to side. I think I like it side to side better since it puts all the cables up front for easy access. Now I just have to wait for this current print to finish so I can move the machine into the enclosure. Eh, who am I kidding? I can't wait that long. And the Snapmaker has power recovery feature, so I unplugged it and moved it into the enclosure. And finally, 
attach the exhaust hose. This is an amazing change. It's a lot quieter. I don't have to fuss around with any lighting for filming. And it pulls all the dust and smoke out really well. I couldn't be any happier about it. And I really like the looks of it as well. My next task is to start working on some tool holders to mount on the side that has the French cleats. Click here to see some other French cleat tool holders that I've made for the French cleat wall.